The ARK Innovation ETF, ARKK is the ticker, is down about 15% year-to-date 2021, and yet the founder, Kathy Wood, is as optimistic as ever and expects hundreds of percent potential upside in just the next five years. The question is, is she just talking her book, or how likely is it that it could actually happen in this video, I'm going to talk about the top holdings of ARC. What do I think of the upside or the, the potential that they can deliver on what Kathy Wood thinks and that this you know ETF, ARKK, can it actually go up several hundred percent in the ne just the next few years? If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel and you're watching Unrivaled Investing, a no-hype mission-focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. Let's dive right in. Or in full disclosure, this is not financial advice and at the time of this video publication, I did not own any shares in the ARK or ARKK ETF. And so diving in here, so just this past week, Kathy Wood called out how she expects her funds to quadruple over the next five years. So that's expected performance, quadruple. Her exact quote, with some of the increased estimates we are now using based on fundamentals, not at all on valuation. We now see a quadrupling over the next five years in our portfolio. That's from CNBC. If this happened, their innovation ETF, ARKK, would trade over $400 per share. So from around $100 per share to $400 per share by 2026, that would be an incredible return. The question is, how likely is it to actually happen? And so this optimistic outlook should be caveated with her view earlier this month that as long as we don't fall into a recession, we're in a long bull market that she expects. So in my opinion, saying this like, hey, as long as recession doesn't happen, things are going to work out. It's kind of like saying as long as Thanksgiving doesn't roll around, this turkey is going to keep getting fatter. I mean, the reality is recessions are a natural function of economic cycles, and they're usually preceded by monetary tightening by the Federal Reserve. And on that point, the Federal Reserve is widely expected to raise rates at least once next year, maybe even twice. So I'd say this whole approach of like putting your head in the sand of thinking maybe that's a, that's a different bird, but uh, putting your head in the sand thinking, hey, you know, as long as there's no recession, as long as there's no economic hiccups, you know, this market can keep, you know, marching higher. And so, you know, will arc 4x from here do the quadrupling that Kathy Wood thinks? In, in my opinion, it depends on the underlying investments as always. You need to you know dive a little bit deeper. In order to quadruple, the underlying portfolio needs to compound at 32% annualized for the next five years. That's quite a task. So then let's look at the individual holdings. And wow, look at these growth rates for ARK's top holdings. I mean, this, this, this sample of the top holdings represented by size represents nearly half the portfolio. And the only top holding that's not growing above that 32% threshold is Spotify. So you can see the growth rates that I put in for the top holdings as of the third quarter, comparing it to the year over year results. I mean, there are some monster growth figures here that do suggest that 30% plus growth rate that could result in quadrupling, you know, ARK's investment portfolio. And reality is not every company needs to compound at 32 32%. If you overweight on some of the bigger compounders that grow at much faster rates, for example, you know, Coinbase is one of the top positions. It's growing over 315%. That's, you know, their growth is, it should call out that their sequential growth isn't as fast. You did look at a, a slight decline quarter over quarter, but looking at it on a year over year basis, just incredible growth. Looking at Teladoc, which had a, you know, is benefiting from, from recent mergers, you know, that also 80% plus growth. So a lot of companies here post that 30% plus growth. So it's a question of, you know, how sustainable is this growth in the years ahead? And do you have any sort of economic hiccups that prevent them from keep on doing this? And while growth is a core lens to anticipate future returns, in my opinion, you can't ignore valuation either. You do need to consider valuation. For example, Unity is around 6% of ARK's portfolio, ARKK, and their innovation ETF. And Unity is, look, it's an amazing business. I've done a video on it. And, you know, very impressive, really like it. And I think it's going to have a huge impact on society and innovation in the future. But the challenge is that everyone knows it's exceptional and it trades at 50 times sales, while many comparable growth companies trade at half or even less the same valuation despite similar growth rates. So that's the challenge. It's like, wait a second, you're giving 100% premium for their growth. 
So in my opinion, will arc for X from here. First, a quick plug, where if you're interested in following along with my personal financial journey, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, where each month I call up potential multibaggers as well as my personal portfolio. We also have an exclusive community dedicated to learning and trying to find exceptional companies on Discord. So once again, if you're interested, make sure to go to Unrivaled Investing, click join the journey. If you enjoy learning about potential multibaggers, types of stocks, or in this case, potential ETF that could potentially go up hundreds or even thousands percent over time, please make point of hitting that subscribe button. So the way to think about what Kathy Wood is doing with ARKK, you know, saying, hey, I think these things can quadruple. It's important to understand that ARK is effectively swinging for the fences here. You know, it's identifying the fastest growing disrupt disruptive players. And if valuations just stay flat, their hyper growth can result in incredible returns saying, hey, just let's keep the current valuation multiples layer on these fantastic growth rates. And that implies that would be your potential return. The challenge is returns are driven not only by fundamentals, but also you have to factor in valuation and cash flow. And that that is a core problem here with that valuation is that you look at the valuations and they don't always stay flat. And the reality is ARK has benefited tremendously the last few years as the NASDAQ price to sales multiple. And a lot of these are tech oriented businesses. The NASDAQ price to sale multiple has doubled just in the last five years. So that that means the if 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 a NASDAQ if the NASDAQ, for example, didn't grow, if the underlying fundamentals didn't grow, it would have doubled regardless, just because the valuation expanded. If that valuation were to return just to 2017 levels, it would be the equivalent of a 50% headwind. And 2017 was not particularly low valuation period either. If you go back to the 2010 through 2012 period, it was as low as one times price of sales or an 80% drop in valuation from here. So I'm not saying that's definitively going to happen, but I think it is worth considering because that is a real headwind. Valuations don't always go up. Oftentimes they go down as well. And that could be a huge headwind and make it really hard for these growth companies, these innovative co growth companies to actually deliver results anywhere near Year, what Kathy Wood expects. Personally, I think it's important to understand that risk changes over time. And one core way to measure risk is by understanding valuation. That's why it always sort of boggles me when people say, well, you can ignore valuation. You can't. It's a core measure of how you think about the risk of a business, like in terms of what the risk reward. You know, Howard Marks loves to make the point that, you know, any asset can be a good purchase if it's at a compelling enough valuation. The same thing in an inverse, you know, anything can be a bad purchase at the wrong valuation. You know, similarly, you know, recognizing that risk changes over time. Sometimes you're going to have multiple expansions. Sometimes you're going to have multiple contraction. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have recessionary periods where the Federal Reserve can't step up and save you. It's important to position your portfolio for both the good and bad. Recessions certainly do happen. That's why in my personal portfolio, I have both slower growth profitable companies at what I think are dirt cheap multiples. I've called out, you know, several of them as past potential multibaggers to my journey subscribers. I also alone, you know, own some hyper growth companies. I mean, either way, it's important to consider valuation, you know, for the full spectrum of possible companies. You know, for example, this month's potential multibagger exclusively for journey subscribers is currently growing multiples of the rate of unity, which is our second largest position, but trades at less than half the valuation. So that's a perfect example of like, okay, it's growing faster and cheaper. That smells right to me. Uh, and I think it has a just incredible growth runway. Personally, I'm very skeptical that ARC will actually deliver on what Kathy Wood expects of that quadrupling in the next five years. I think that's a really optimistic take as it requires no economic hiccups or valuation compression. And the reality is in just the last five years, ARC has benefited tremendously from valuation, multiple expansion, and any sort of reset would be a major headwind. Uh, maybe it'll happen, but I'd rather make what I think are easier bets. Good luck to all involved. And if this video talking about Kathy Wood, the ARK Innovation ETF, ARKK, what is the likelihood whether Kathy Wood ultimately delivers on that 4X in five years? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I'm, I'm a little skeptical. I'd rather bet on very specific individual companies where I think the risk reward is compelling. Uh, let me know your thoughts. If you're a major investor in the ARK ETFs and you think I'm missing something, would absolutely love to hear it. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much.